Hello, and welcome back to the Lifery DXP Backend Building Blocks course. In this module, we're going to be going over integrating applications with Lifery DXP frameworks. Uh, the key module takeaways are going to be understanding the asset framework and the benefits of its integration with applications. And we're also going to know the typical process by which the search framework is integrated with applications. Before we get started, some exercise prerequisites. You need to make sure that you have Java JDK installed to run Liferay DXP, which you can download at the link on the screen. You need to make sure that you have Liferay Developer Studio or a similar IDE installed with the Gradebook Workspace project already created. And if you want to see how this was done, this was done in previous training modules, and you can check out some of those. Uh, you'll also need to make sure that your exercise prerequisite files have been placed in the Gradebook workspace. And these are going to be all the files that were altered in the previous training modules. As a reminder, we are creating a Gradebook application, which consists of a course gradebook with the following features. Teachers can create assignments. Students can send submissions to assignments. And then teachers can go ahead and grade those submissions. In this module, we will be integrating our gradebook application with both the asset framework and the search framework, which will enable us to, at the end of the exercises for this section, to be able to go ahead and search for assignments using the search bar. And a relevant KPI for this module is we're going to increase searchability of entities within custom applications by associating them with related content. Now, we're going to take a look at integrating an application with the asset framework. The main concepts that we're going to be covering in this section include the asset framework, assets, asset renderers, and asset renderer factories. The asset framework is a life rate platform framework that makes it possible to publish and manage any kind of content in a unified way and through a standard API. The framework provides ways of associating and linking content with, for example, other portal assets, tags, and categories. And it makes it possible to integrate with portal search, workflows, and staging. An asset is an abstract, generic representation of any model entity. It's also a wrapper for the actual entity, guaranteeing a certain set of metadata. An asset renderer is a model type specific class responsible for displaying an asset. For example, it would be a class implementing renderer. The class is responsible for rendering the URLs for viewing and editing an asset, checking view permissions, and providing access to the wrapped entity. The asset renderer implements the asset renderer in interface. An asset renderer factory is an OSGI component class that makes an asset renderer available to the calling application or API. The factory pattern provides possibility to have multiple renderers for a single asset type. Uh, this diagram illustrates and summarizes the components of the asset framework. On a platform page or a portal page, there is an asset publisher portlet querying the newest assets. The asset framework gets a list of assets that contain the required set of metadata and references them to the actual content items. When rendering the assets, the asset publisher portlet first finds the asset renderer factory service for the model type and then asks for an asset renderer from the factory. The asset renderer uses the data from the actual content item wrapped by an asset to render the item on the type specific JSP files provided. Every asset publisher view, like, abstracts, full content, and table has a dedicated JSP file. This is an example of an asset in the database. Specifically, this is a table for blogs entry. Here you can see the table for asset entry, which contains a subset of blogs entry. And here you can see a blog's asset record in both the asset entry and blogs entry. Some asset fields of interest include class name, which identifies the entity's class, class PK, 
which is the primary key of the model entity, class UUID, a secondary identifier that's guaranteed to be universally unique, class type ID, which identifies the particular variation of this class, if any, it has a default of zero, category IDs, which are the asset category IDs for the entity, tag names, which are simply tag names for the entity, visible, which specifies whether the entity is approved, we have start date, which indicates when the entity should be visible. End date, which is when the entity should stop being visible. Publish date, which is simply the date the entity will be published or visible. Expiration date, which is the date the entity will be archived, which means it will no longer be visible. URL, which is a URL to optionally associate with the entity. Layout UUID, which is the universally unique ID of the layout of the entry's default display page, priority, ranking among peer entity instances. So some benefits of integrating our application with the asset framework include the ability to show custom entities in the asset publisher portlet. Uh, it allows us to associate tags, categories, comments, and ratings with entities within our application. It enables us to integrate with portal search and workflows, enable staging for the entities, relate assets to each other, assign social bookmarks like Facebook likes to the entity. It allows us to add custom fields through the LifeRate Expando API. It allows us to track the number of times an asset is viewed, and it also enables recycle bin support. The steps we are going to take to integrate our gradebook application with the asset framework. We are going to first add the required fields and references to the entity definitions. We're going to manage asset resources, which usually are the CRUD methods on the service layer. We're going to create an asset renderer factory for the model class. We're going to create an asset renderer for the model class. And finally, we're going to implement the JSP files to support the asset publisher. Mm -hmm.